Hey everybody, um, this is Jesse here. This is a, another random thought, and this is a, a very, very interesting random thought. And um, take it as it may, but uh, you know, I just said, you know, the thing is, is do you believe the Bible? Do you believe that we need to interpret Scripture with Scripture when it comes to the Book of Revelation? Do you realize that you cannot read the book in chronological order? You have certain sequence of events that happen, and it goes into a pause, and then, you know, the, those same events pick up again, then it stops, and another set of events are explained. It's not in chronological order, people. Also, Scripture interprets Scripture. Meaning that there is a possibility that You know, you can find certain events that have happened that pertain to the future events from one time into till the future time. And, um, and I'm going to explain that right now. Sorry, my sinuses are a little messed up, but... Okay. I'm going to read from Revelation chapter 12. Okay, now, I know this verse was used a lot last year and related to Elenin and everything like that. Um, but again, we have to be willing to interpret Scripture with Scripture. Okay, and pay attention to phrases and symbolism, because this chapter 12, 1 through 9 is full of it. Okay. All right. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Oh. Okay. Now you're looking upon her head a crown, st 12, crown of twelve stars. Um, it is widely speculated that the woman represents Israel, which is now spiritual Israel. Um, but at the time, you, you know represents Israel, the crown of 12 stars, is uh, the 12 tribes. And she, being with child, cried, obviously. Yeshua was born in Israel, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. You gotta understand something about the devil. You gotta understand something about Satan, okay? Um, there is a time period where he was able to go back and forth, you know, to be the accuser of the people okay the time of job he was able to do that you gotta remember he's not omnipotent he can't be everywhere at once all right now the woman which is represented by israel okay you know crown of 12 stars the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour a child as soon as, as it was born. When Christ was born, obviously we know the story. They fled into Egypt because Herod sought to kill the Christ child, the man child. And, uh, so, the angel of Yahweh spoke to um, Joseph in a dream, um, basically saying, flee into Egypt until the time is right. Okay. Now, you got to remember, you know, much like in Isaiah in certain spots, when, when we read a verse, sometimes it's divided. Okay, sometimes it's divided. And she brought forth a man-child. 
This is talking about Christ, okay? For to devour a child as soon as it was born, all right? This is talking about the first advent. And then we go from who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and a child was called up unto God and to his throne. Well, obviously, he's going to rule all nations with a rod of iron when he comes back, okay? And her child was called up unto God. That's talking about his ascension. So you can see it talks about his birth, talk about the future tense, and then it goes into his ascension up into heaven. So you can kind of see past, future, past. You see what I mean when you read these verses and revelations? Okay, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has prepared where she has a place prepared of Yahweh and they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days or three and a half years um well the woman fled into the wilderness we can kind of see that uh you know that is possibly you know you know the nations are scattered basically the, the 12 tribes are scattered um, you know I don't know too much about this all I know is this is translated into three and a half years other people have taken the day for a year principle and prophecy and made mention of this is 1260 years um, there's a whole bunch of speculation on that, but um, we move on to Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in, in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. I want you to pay real close attention to those two words cast out. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. <coughs> so, three times it mentions cast out. Okay, it means kicked out. I, you know, I don't know if that means that he still can keep on going back and forth to deceive, you know, to uh, be the accuser of the brethren, but I would think not. Now, I want to take you to something here, because this might astound you. And pay attention to the word cast out. And when you read the scriptures, I mean, read it for what it says. Okay? Pay close attention. I'm going to take you to John. John. <coughs> chapter 12. Obviously, John also wrote Revelation. Verse 27. Now... Christ is speaking of his time right, you know, at the present moment, okay? Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. So something was going on in the spiritual realm at this point. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Pay very close attention now. Now, speaking, you got to remember when he was saying this. This is present tense at this time, at this time period. Now is the judgment of this world, of this age. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out who is the prince of this world who is the deceiver who is the prince and power of the air 
Who is it? Who was cast out? Which deceives the whole world. Who was cast out? Who's the prince of this world? And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Keep in mind of the whole thing we've been doing with the armor of God. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. So from this point on, he's saying soon. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Or comes. John sixteen seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. There you go again. Who is the prince of this world? See, at this point he's judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. So obviously there was something going on in heaven. Okay. Because again, you look at John 12, 27 through 31, especially in 31. And you go and look at John 16. You go and look in Revelation 12, verse 9. Okay. I mean, I, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. There was a certain time period that he was going to be cast out. Okay. There was a certain time that he was going to be cast out. And the prince of this world... And we all should know this by now. Is that great that dragon. That old serpent. Called the devil. And Satan. So. My question is this. After reading these. And this is all I did was read from the scriptures. Okay. Especially from reading verse 9. Cast out. You go to John 12.31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Okay. He go to John 14.30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Brethren, if he was not cast out, and if he was not scouring the earth, 100% of the time, and his angels with him, why would we have to have the armor of God? Think about that. Why would it say that and the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet? Shortly. Could that be a prof prophetic inclement? Also a personal inclement for your spiritual walk? Prophetically spiritually speaking for the thousand years the thousand year reign something to think about folks but again because the prince of this world is judged you look at this from John 16 7 verse 16 11 okay and then Genesis 3 15 so I will put these scripture references in the uh, description box below. Um, but again, all I did was read from scripture. I did not interpret anything. And um, all I was doing was 
comparing scripture with scripture line upon line line upon line here a little there a little precept must be upon precept precept upon precept so and according to what I read it seems like he was already cast out Satan was already cast out during this time period when Yeshua was saying these things in John chapter 12 so until next time guys truth be told truth be known seriously let me know what you guys think I know this might be very new to some of you but um, I figured I need to share this with you guys okay all right, take it easy, guys. Blessings. Bye-bye.